Citrus has been a big part of Arizona's agricultural history, and fruit trees are a staple in many neighborhoods and backyards. But how best to plant and nurture citrus trees? For the answer, we turn to Greg Peterson of the Urban Farm. Welcome to Arizona Horizon. What is the Urban Farm? The Urban Farm is my home. I live in north central Phoenix. It's a third of an acre. That's about 80 feet wide and 160 feet deep. And I've got fruit trees planted on the property, I'll about 80 do. of them. Holy smoke. Okay. Yeah. And you do pop-up nursery events. What are those? Yeah. So about 17 years ago, I started educating people about fruit trees. And so in this fall every year, they can take free fruit tree classes from me all the way through into January, February, and they can pre-purchase trees. And then in January, February, and March, we do a pop-up nursery where we bring in the trees that they purchased and they can come down and get them and learn, you know, the best nutrients to put on them and how to plant them and well let, let's start with some of these lessons right. how do you know what kind of fruit tree to select well there's a lot about that first of all citrus is one of the five C's of Arizona sure right so we know it grows well here so in the citrus arena you pick what you love one of my favorite things navel oranges yes they're ripe right now Can't, but all right I'll stop you right there okay. I've heard navel oranges are tough to grow no not at all not at all piece of cake uh, I compared to juice oranges juice orange well the Arizona sweet juice oranges they're they're pretty they're pretty pretty, easy to grow. pretty yeah. simple yeah but navel oranges aren't that far behind Wow and it really is in how you plant them and nurture them along the way that's so, the big thing so as far as what works best in Arizona the answer is everything Kind of, kind of. With citrus, the answer is everything. With deciduous trees, deciduous trees lose their leaves in the winter. They're apples, apricots, plums, peaches, uh, pomegranates, figs. They all do great here, depending on the variety. So for those, the deciduous trees, you need something that is low chill. Uh, talk to us about that, because we're not getting much chill this winter at no, all. We're not getting that much chill this winter. That is the case. So low chill, we get about 300 hours of chill here in the Valley of the Sun. And there are plenty of all of those varieties that I just named that do great here. So like the, my favorite peach is a desert gold peach. Mm. It ripens mid-May. And it is, once you eat a desert gold peach off of, fresh off of a tree, you can't eat a store-bought peach anymore. So you have to pick the right variety. But then, you, you know, it's just like, what do you want to grow? So you pick the right variety, mm -hmm. and uh, you're looking at your tree, your little box tree there, mm -hmm. and you're saying, now what do I do? Now what you do. So it's really 80% of success with fruit trees is how you plant them. So you want to dig a, a big hole, the bigger the better in our desert soils. When you put nutrients back in the hole, you want to put only a little bit of the desert soil back. You want to add compost. Mm. I usually I say at least 50% compost. We use a rock dust mineral called azomite that really boosts the growth of the tree. And then there's other things that you can add like mycorrhiza. That's life in the soil. So once that's done, you get the tree in the hole. You get the nutrients in there mixed nicely. The big thing that we need to do is at least a six-foot basin around the tree. Ah. and add four to six inches of mulch wood chips around the base of the tree. Keep it cool. To keep it cool, to start building the soil real healthfully. Now, for us on flood irrigation, I'm on a flood a lot. I know you are. Yes. It's a little bit simpler, and I still highly encourage that they put a basin around the tree and put wood chips in the basin. So as far as sun and shade is concerned, obviously you want some sun, but this is Arizona. That's a tough sun. That is that is true. So for the first few years of your fruit trees, if you can give them some western shade until they grow out and they're shading themselves, you're golden. Yeah. Okay. So watering. Watering. I'm how, glad you asked. How, I mean, the flood irrigation lots, we're lucky. Yes. Okay. But even, you know, even now, it's the winter time, you're never quite sure what to do. Mm -hmm. If you don't have flood irrigation, how much do you water these things? Great question. So I take a clue from the flood irrigation. We mm. get it once a month in the winter and twice a month in the summer. Right. And the fruit trees do great, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that's what I encourage people to do. In that basin that we put around your tree, you want to stick a hose or a bubbler. You, uh, you know, yes. you don't want bubblers, not drip irrigation. The quickest way to kill your trees, put them on a drip irrigation line. Why? Because you're not getting them enough water. Okay. They get like a gallon of water once every two days or so. That's going to kill your tree. The second biggest, quickest way to kill your trees is to put them in gravel mulch. If you put them in a gravel yard, 
it's a solar oven out there. Oh, yeah. So again, rake back the gravel, gravel and put the basin in place. Um, and then in grass, Bermuda grass, your Bermuda grass can outcompete your tree. So you, again, you just cut back the a basin yeah, yes, and yes. put the wood chips in the basin and let nature do the work. As far as fertilizing, I have heard, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. I've got a lot of trees in my yard, so it's worked pretty well for me so far, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not the urban farmer. There you go. Valentine's Day, uh -huh. Memorial Day, Labor Day. Beautiful. That's, that's Have you been much listening it. to me? No. <laughs> that's I great. got that a long time ago. Oh, perfect. So that's basically three times a year during those kind of generally around those areas. Yes. And actually, we like to add a, sec a, a fourth one in. Oh. So Valentine's Day. Yes. Tax Day. Oh. Labor Day. So hit them hard. And Memorial Day. And hit Labor them hard Day. in the spring. Now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When they're growing. And, and use a good organic fertilizer. I'll, oh, yes. That was my next question. Yeah. Fertilizer. How do fertilizer. you do that? So, you know, there's the citrus fertilizer, and it's just nitrogen, generally. So it gets you, you know, a lot of growth. It doesn't get you a lot of fruit. I like to use a nice organic fertilizer. We sell 50-pound bags of Bioflora organic fertilizer. It's made here in the valley at our pop-up nursery. So, and then you usually, I usually put about a pound per, uh, per tree yes. per session. Okay. So four pounds a year. And how long, because again, I've got experience here, yes. how long before that cute little tree becomes something that will consistently give you more than a, an orange or two? Three years. It's, you're right. You're exactly right. Imagine it's, that. But it's almost like clockwork. Yeah. For our trees, yep. it, I, would, I actually charted them. That's how much of a nerd I am. Oh, cool. I would chart how much each, and after the first couple of years, nothing, one, one, nothing. Yep. Third year, Third year boom. boom. Yep. Why is Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Well, they need time to get established. You know, if you add the azomite and the mycorrhiza and the compost in the hole when you're planting it, you might get it in second year, but they really need to get established. And if, the, if a fruit tree is setting fruit in its first year, it's concentrating on setting fruit, not growing. Right. So when you have that young tree, let it concentrate on being growing. a tree. Yep, exactly. And then once the fruit hits, just enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Can you overwater a fruit tree? You absolutely can overwater fruit trees. Absolutely. So if you're watering them every two or three days... Uh, with a lot of water that basically overwatering a tree and underwatering a tree it's the same damage the yes. roots the roots on overwatering rot away the roots on underwatering dry up so the tree can't uptake the water interesting so what got you started in all this oh my gosh um i think i was born with it the uh, i remember back in the mid 70s i grew up here i've been here actually 50 years this year wow. yeah and i'm older than that and I remember in the mid-70s, we moved into the Weldon house, and my mom said, hey, Greg, that's our backyard. See the right half? That's your garden. Go start gardening. And I planted fruit trees in the mid-70s and a garden in the mid-70s, and it just, it's my thing to do. Um, the food system is significantly struggling in our culture, Yes. and we need to create good, healthy food for ourselves. So my task is to figure out how to Really, between now and when I die, make Phoenix a food secure place by growing a lot, if not all, of our food here. And there is a difference, obviously, oh. not just in mechanics, between urban and commercial farming. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Doctor, give us a quick example of the difference. So I have a third of an acre. It's on flood water. My friend Jake Mace out in Mesa has a third of an acre, not on flood water. He's got over 200 fruit trees on his property. Wow. Basically, what we're doing is we're designing with urban farms, and we'll be doing urban farm tours this spring. We're designing with urban farms edible landscapes so that there's always something to eat. It's like a food forest right. in your front, in your Some, front something comes, and backyard. Yeah, so, oh, I got you. So something's always ripening and ready to go. Exactly. 365 days a year, we can get, harvest a meal out of the yard at the urban farm. And there are thousands of people out there doing this as well. Well, uh, you got one of them here who's kind of doing it. I don't know if I'm nice. quite sure. I'm not more in overalls or anything, but we're kind of right. getting it done. I'm not Con either. Congratulations. Urban Farm, how do you, how do you find out more? Urban Urban Farm.org. Urbanfarm Urbanfarm.org. Yep. All right. Good to have you here. Thank Thanks. you.